friends and book babes welcome back to the channel today we are doing a asian authors book recommendation video if you've been following me for a little bit in february for black history month i did a similar video for black author rex and just kind of a incentive to help you guys kind of read more diversely throughout the year not just for black history month you know what i mean <laughs> and if you didn't know may is asian american pacific islander heritage month so for the month of may i decided since i'm a blasian let's do it again but for asian authors quick disclaimer asia is the biggest continent in the world if you didn't know now you know you're welcome so i may not have gotten every ethnicity within asia on my list but i have an excel sheet same one i used for my black authors i just made a second sheet down below i have this open and available for you guys to edit as well so you can add your own recs not just in the comments but in this sheet because i have it on my link tree and everywhere you can have it accessible so you can always like go back and look at recs that people might have got given i really just want this to be like a place where you can find diverse recs pretty easily i'm gonna break this up into genres and i realized that i don't have that many romance books if i do it's mainly ya so i apologize for that we're gonna do ya so i have two romances for ya and that is the love match and of a to all the boys i love before meets pride and prejudice type of rom-com set for a Bangladesh American teen. And then I have the Karma Map. This is a youth group's temple road trip through India, a liberating escape for a former mean girl and sunshine boy to explore their past and their feelings for each other. And then for YA fantasy, I have Song of Silver, Flame of Night. This is basically in a fallen kingdom, one girl carries the key to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at its heart. And it's inspired by mythology and folklore of ancient China. Most of these, by the way, are on my TBR. There are some on here that I've read, but for the most part, I was wanting things that I personally want to read as well. I have Cinder and Glass, just a Cinderella retelling, and there's an interconnected standalone. So I think right now she also has a Snow White retelling as well. I have Patron Saints of Nothing. This is a coming of age story about grief, guilt, and the risk a Filipino American teenager takes to uncover the truth about his cousin's murder. I have two romances. First is The Fraud Squad. This is a working class woman who infiltrates Singapore's high society to fill her dreams risks losing everything in the process including herself so we're getting we're giving some high society maybe some gossip girl vibes I don't know this one I actually own it and have read <laughs> so I have a holly jolly Diwali this one is an interconnected standalone the book for her sister in this book just came out and that one's enemies to lovers so I really want to read that one but this one is more about type a da data analyst discovering her free-spirited side on an Im impulsive journey to India during Diwali and also finding love on the way yeah this one is actually listed on my pango books that should be linked down below so if anyone wants to purchase this from me you can as well one of my favorite books of the year is before the coffee gets cold this one is a magical realism and it's just so good this is one of four but i believe they're interconnected standalones if i'm not mistaken but this one is basically a a magical realism book is basically about this coffee shop in Japan where you can pretty much go to the past um but you have to return before the coffee gets cold otherwise you basically become a ghost <laughs> so I love this book I highly recommend it. and then I've read these as well I have the shatter me series the first three um people go back and forth with if they prefer the first three or the last three in the series I personally like the first three this one is basically following a girl named Juliet whose skin literally kills people until she meets someone who she touches and doesn't kill. And it's insane. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. I really enjoyed Ignite Me the most. The first one, you kind of got to like get through. <laughs> but in Ignite Me, Ignite Me is the one for me. Also, Tahara Mafi has a new series called The Woven Kingdom that you can also check out if you want something more recent. And the Shadow Me series is also dystopian fantasy. Then getting more into fantasy, I have Iron Widow. This one is basically a girl um, 
wants to murder someone. <laughs> And in doing so, she realizes she has this really like unheard of power that females tend to not have. And so then she goes through the like training process with someone else that's really strong in it and things like that. Hmm. And then I have a daughter of the moon goddess. This one I just got on Libby. So I plan on reading it this month. I'm really excited. A young woman's quest to free her mother and ends up being pit against the most powerful mortal in the realm. So. This one is a part of a duology, I believe. A Song of the Crimson Flower. This is one of my favorite books. I need to reread it soon. Maybe I will this month, who knows. But this is one of my favorite books. This is a continuation of a duology. This is like 2.5 basically. So if you want to read the duology first, you probably should because this kind of talks about the aftermaths of the duology but this one is a Vietnamese folklore retelling and it kind of gave me like Beauty and the Beast vibes um but instead of becoming a beast his soul gets trapped in a flute and it's really nice and it was childhood friends to hate I wouldn't say enemies but childhood friends to hate to needing help needing to help each other to lovers <laughs> so I really like it and I really love the love confession the woman gives. I feel like women's love confessions aren't always that prominent in books but hers was so good. Anyways and then I have Keeper of the Night. This one's a duology. I read the first one. I still haven't read the second one. I need to get to that really quickly but this one is a Japanese folklore. The main character struggles with her identity of being biracial and having mixed abilities because she's biracial. But I know she's Shimigami and a reaper I think is the second one. So I really liked the first one. I just need to finish the second one. Last Tale of the Flower Bride. A gothic infused story about a marriage that is unraveled by dark secrets, a friendship cursed to end in tragedy, and the danger of believing in fairy tales. Aiki, of course, I read this one last summer, and this one is basically just a feminist retelling of an Indian epic, Foul Lady Fortune. This one's by Chloe Gong. She is also the person that wrote These Violet Delights. Foul Lady Fortune is an ill-matched pair of spies posing as a married couple to investigate a series of brutal murders in 1930s Shanghai. So this one, I believe, is a duology. And the second one comes out in September. I actually have a horror. I found a horror book. I usually don't read that. The most I'll do is thriller usually. But I found one and it sounded a little interesting. But it's called She is a Haunting. And the main character goes to visit her estranged father. And then she finds out that the house might be haunted or something. So I don't know. <laughs> Now we have the mysteries. So the mysteries I found were Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murders. <laughs> well, basically Vera Wong is a 60 year old self-proclaimed tea expert. And so she kind of like owns her own shop and stuff. But then one day she wakes up and finds a dead man in the middle of her tea shop. <laughs> and she has decided, you know, she listens to uh, true crime podcasts maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but she's like, I can figure this out better than the detectives can. So we're basically following her journey with that. <laughs> then I have the Bandit Queens. This is basically about a woman who is a widow, but everyone thinks that she basically killed him because he wasn't a good husband. So I guess we don't really know if she did or not. She also likes being a widow because people are like automatically nice to her and also support her business and all these things. So the women start to notice and they start asking her to help help her with get rid of their like no good husbands and stuff <laughs> kind of interesting especially since we are not aware if she truly did end her husband's life <laughs> so I don't know but it sounded a little interesting and I have now you see us this one is about three women who work in the homes of Singapore elites and band together to solve a murder mystery involving one of their own and then I have the blue bar this one is on the dark streets of Mumbai, the paths of, mi of a missing dancer, a serial killer, and an inspector haunting past convert in a thriller about lost love and murderous obsessions. And this one is a part of the Blue Mumbai series as well. And the second one comes out in October. Age of Vice. This one is basically following a family who is kind of in the like gangster mob 
seen in Delhi. And that's all I needed to know, you know? <laughs> I'm very easy, all right? I just needed to know that and I was like, cool. The Rope Artist, this one is a Japanese lit. There was a lot going on with this one. So I didn't make a blur before it because I didn't even know how to flat fathom like explaining what this one's about, but definitely look up the blurb because it's kind of heavy also, but it sounded really interesting. And then getting into fiction, I have I Want to See My Father. This one is a continuation of the book Please Look After Mom. And so this one is basically a woman's efforts to reconnect with her aging father and uncovering long held family secrets. Laughter. This one is basically about an aging white male college professor who develops like this dangerous obsession with his new Pakistani colleague. So and this one got translated into English. Um, I believe it was in Japanese before. Same with um, before the coffee gets cold. This was originally in Japanese and this one is called how do you live and this one is older this one came out in like 1937 <laughs> and that might just be the english translation so the original might have be older i don't know <laughs> but this one is basically a japanese classic about finding one's place in a world both infinitely large and unimaginably small then of course i had to put rf kwan on the list and i have yellow face this one is basically following a woman who kind of steals an asian woman's books and poses as the writer <laughs> so that one's gonna be interesting this one comes out this month actually so i'm excited and of course our kwan has a lot of different books you can get into i just finished the poppy war trilogy a month or two ago and i really enjoyed that so you could also try that if you want more fantasy and then last but not least i have as long as the lemon trees grow this one's a historical fiction and this one's kind of just following a syrian woman i believe who kind of just going through the torment she feels of being loyal to her country and her conviction to survive during some horrendous things that are happening like bombings and stuff so this one is gonna be heavy but i'm really interested and intrigued with the story so yeah that is pretty much all the recs i have definitely please utilize this google sheet i'll have it linked down below and you can add your own stuff or the asian author specifically i have the title the author their ethnicity the blurb and if it's a series or not the genre and the release date so please utilize this <laughs> diversely throughout the year not just in the months when it's appreciation of the races and stuff definitely utilize the google sheet and also you can comment down below your recs as well um but thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe follow me on my socials and i will see you guys next time bye meet me on the street lights meet me where the lights fade out